Hi there. This is H. Victoria Hugger Atkerson. I'm an author and a writer, and I'm also a publisher. I'm looking for people of color who want to publish books because I think it's one of the most uh, wonderful things that we can do for the generations that is to follow us. Now, uh, over the next few weeks, I will be sharing some stories from slave narratives. Um, these are people who ran away from different plantations, different states, um, all over the South, and they reach freedom. They are in Canada, and they have uh, enjoyed a free life. So, and, and this is a collection of stories that were taken from people who reached Canada and safety. Many did not make it. But one of the things I always like to, to hear when the people talk about uh, the s civil rights and the fight for freedom and slave rebellion and the things of that sort, when did that start? When did people start resisting? It started from the moment someone put them in chains. Every stage and every month, year, and day of slavery, we have resisted. We pay many many prices for that in the lives of people who sacrifice themselves to save the rest of us. So we must be conscious of our history. And then we internalize that love of freedom because we were born free. This is something that we need to uh, just take a look at. So I thought it would be interesting to look at these stories and see if we can pull that strength out. Because one of the things, the question I am answering while in reading these is the fact that I hear young people who are saying, what good is it going to do to vote? Why do I need to vote? And nothing's going to change. So that, to me, is the most frustrating thing about talking to young people today. There's a sense of helplessness and uh, trying to get them motivated to get out there and vote and to get other people to vote has been a chore, but once you ignite that flame in them, they respond. So we need to take a look at uh, our past in order to go forward. It's, uh, someone explained it to me. I'm not even sure where I heard this from. One of the uh, historians I think I was listening to on YouTube, I can't remember, can't remember the name, but he said, um, when we look at our past, we're all, you have to think of it as, you know, what we call Sankofa, go back and get it. But if you think of your studying your past as a slingshot, which I think is a great analogy, you fire a slingshot, you pull the rubber back, 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 and the further you pull it back and you let it go, it goes forward. That, that rock will fly ahead at an amazing speed going forward. And that's what our history does. It gives us that momentum to go further and faster. So we wanna go back and get that history to, in, to uh, inspire us to do better. So let me get busy with reading this before it gets, we lose too much time. Okay, this is a person, his name is James Adams. And uh, these stories were written in 1830s, okay? Slavery ended in 1865. All right, James Adams writes, I was raised in Virginia, about 20 miles above the mouth of the Big Kanawha. At age 17, I set out to seek freedom in the company of Benjamin Harris, who was a cousin of mine, and a woman and four children. I was young, and they had not treated me very badly, but I had seen older men treated worse than a horse or a hog ought to be treated. So seeing what was coming to me, I wished to get away. My father being overseer, I was not used so badly as even younger children than myself, who were kicked, cuffed, and whipped very badly for little or nothing. They started, we started away at night on the 12th of August, 1824. After we had crossed the river, an alarm was sounded. 
My father came down to the river where we had crossed and called me to come back. I had not told my intentions to either my father or my mother. I made no answer at all, but we walked three miles back from the river where we lay concealed in the woods for four days. Now, James was huh, was uh, 17 years old, and interesting, interesting, great story. I love this. I love stories, as you know. <laughs> okay, but years later, I mean, it, it, this is his story, and he's, he's writing this now. He's saying uh, he's in Canada, and he has found a place to live, which he is buying. And he says, my family is with me, and we live well and enjoy ourselves. I worship at the Methodist Church. What religious instructions I received on the plantation was from my mother. Men, oh, uh, let's see, men who had never seen or felt slavery cannot realize it for, what it, what, for the thing that it is. If those who say that fugitives had better go back, were to go to the South and see slavery, they would never wish that any slave go back. I have seen separations by sale of husbands from wives, of parents from children. If a man threatens to run away, he is sure to be sold South. Ben's mother was sold South to New Orleans when he was 20 years old. I arrived in Canada on the 13th of September. 1824. Isn't that amazing? It's really great. The determination, I think, is wonderful. I think it's wonderful. So you see, uh, it took a lot of courage to do what, what James Adams did. And we have to have that same courage and determination to move forward. So I hope you enjoyed these stories because I think they're very, very important because it tells us who we are. We have always longed for freedom and justice. And we have to take the extra step to get there. Many, many people not only got to Canada, but they got to the northern states as well to get away from enslaved states. So there was always a thirst for freedom. And there was always a thirst for justice. And I think that's our chore now is to make sure that we complete the dream that these brave souls had. And we need to internalize their courage and move forward. So you take care. I'll be back to read another one of these adventures. I think they're absolutely uh, astounding. And some of them are a bit gruesome, but I think you need to hear them. Okay? So I will uh, talk to you soon. God bless, and I love you.